All right, here we go. Next problem. And in this problem, the first thing we're going to do, as always, is read the question sentence. So when we read it, it says, if there are 10 cats, what is the total number of animals? So be careful here. Again, it says, what is the total number of animals? Okay, keep that in mind. So we have 10 cats given to us right here at the beginning. So 10 cats, and we're comparing that with blank total. So let's see if we can get this one done without doing too much extra work. Let's see what we can do. It says, at a shelter, cats to dogs are in a ratio of three to six. Read that again. Cats to dogs, not cats to total. Cats to dogs, be very careful. So if we were to go ahead and say three cats, that's correct. But if we, were go to, uh, if we were to go ahead and say six dogs, you have to understand that this is now dogs right here at the top. You have to compare the same things in the same way. So if you did it this way and you ended up getting 20, well, guess what? That's the wrong answer. Let me show you the right way of doing this. Let me take dogs out of the picture there. Let me take the cats as well over here, just duplicating it. Because everyone, guess what? If I want to compare the same things in the same way, I need a total here as well. If I have three cats for every six dogs, what is the total in this comparison, everyone? What's the, what's the total here? Three cats, six dogs, makes a total of nine animals. So that's what I'll have here. Nine total. And I'll write that right over there. Now that we're here, my party people, now that we're here, we can solve this because notice that we're comparing cats to total, cats to total. Now that we've got this going on, we are good to go. We'll go ahead and say 10 over three equals X over nine. And let's get it going. We can cross multiply and divide nice and easy if we wanted to. And we can also see that we can just compare the same things in the same way. Cross multiplying, we get three times X, 10 times nine. And then we simply divide both sides by three and we're done. X equals 30, because that's what 90 divided by three is, which means that we get 30 total animals at this shelter. Again, if we would have used the six, if we would have used the six, let me show you what that would have looked like. If we would have used the six, this would have gotten us the number of dogs because six is the number of dogs. So if we would have done that, that would have been three X equals 60, divide by three on both sides, and that gives us 20. Once we got the 20, again, that's 20 dogs. If you had the 10 cats with that, that would be 30 total animals. So that's the biggest part about these types of questions. It's really all about understanding the values that you're using, the values that come about when you're solving. If you understand what the numbers are, then you understand if you're done or not. So hopefully that makes sense to you, my part of you, and I hope you're ready for more. All right, so taking a look at this question here, no matter how complicated it might look, remember that we're always gonna read that question first. So when we do that over here, my party people, go ahead and ask yourself, you know, we're not gonna really care right now about this extra information. We're gonna focus right here where it says, how far apart are they? My party people, when we think about that, when we think about the phrase or the question, how far apart are they? What should immediately pop up into your head? What math idea should pop up into your head? Especially when we consider things like miles per hour and hours being introduced. What do we think of when we think of how far apart are they? Because this right here is a rate. This is a time. So we would consider how far apart a distance. That's what we would consider that as. And this is going to really start the gears from spinning, you know, we're gonna start spinning the gears here because once we read everything up here, two runners travel in the same direction and we wanna know how far apart they are. Well, we might've seen this before. Everybody, what can we do with those final distances or rates 
if we have objects moving in the same direction? How do we get how far apart they are? Yeah, it's going to be through subtraction. It's going to be subtraction all the way. And one more time, let me be very clear here. We can subtract the distances to get that distance in between, or we can subtract the rates. However, remember that the subtracting rates only works for the amount of time that they spend moving at the same exact time. When we read this, everybody, when we read this, runner A starts first at eight miles an hour. Runner B starts one hour later at 11 miles per hour. So answer this question. Are these two objects moving at the same time? Are they moving the entire time at the same time? No, they are not. So what that means is this. We can still subtract. We just cannot subtract the rates. Because again, when we subtract the rates, we're going to multiply by a time, and we can only multiply for the time that they were moving at the same time. And that's not going to work here. What will work, though, is just calculating the individual final distances and then subtracting them. Let me show you what I mean. So here, everybody, we have runner A starts first at 8 miles per hour. So let me go ahead and just say right here for runner A, we have the rate equals 8 miles per hour. Then it says runner B over here starts one hour later at 11 miles per hour. So I'll just write that rate over here at 11 miles per hour. So with that said, everybody, with that said, if we want to know how far apart they are, we have to find the individual distances. So my party people, for how long is runner A running? How long is runner A running? What's that time that we want to multiply the rate by for runner A? Because over here, I see one hour. Here, I see two hours. Which one of them is it? And from the question sentence, it's going to be two hours. It's going to be two. Because it says, after two hours from runner A's start. So after runner A starts, we're calculating two hours from that spot. So the time here is going to be two hours. However, my party people, however, are we also going to put two hours over here? Are we also going to put two hours over here? No, not quite. That is wrong. That is wrong. Because my party people remember, let's go ahead and erase this before I leave that there accidentally. What we see is this. Look, runner A starts first. Runner B starts one hour later. So if we're trying to go two hours from when runner A starts, that first hour is just runner A. And then after the first hour, runner B starts. So that's what that means for this problem. Runner B, the time for runner B is not two, but instead it is one hour. This is that finer detail that we have to pick up because once we actually calculate the numbers and do our thing, we know that we'll be absolutely right. So let's calculate that here. Let me show you what we got. So I'll go ahead and do runner A in purple. Distance equals rate times time. So rate is eight miles per hour. And the time is two hours. Eight times two gives us 16 miles. From there, I'll go ahead and switch to blue. And we'll calculate the distance for runner B. And that's going to be the rate times time, 11 times one. And that's going to give us 11 miles. So what we have here is runner A went 16 miles. Runner B ended up traveling 11 miles. What are we going to do at this point? Because they went in the same direction, everybody. Remind me, what do we have to do now? Subtract, exactly. We've got to subtract because we are trying to cancel out this section right here. This section that we know that they both covered. And so we will subtract knowing that knowledge about same direction. And so that'll be 16 minus 11, giving us a distance separation of five miles. And that, my friends, will be answer choice B.